Hello everyone, this is Elias Martin of CollectingJapanesePrints.com. Welcome to Woodblock Wednesday, where on Wednesdays we get together and discuss Japanese prints, paintings, history, and culture. This is a late night edition of Woodblock Wednesday. I had a lot of uh, difficulties earlier today trying to get the um, video up and I just went out and bought a new phone. Um, and I think these headphones work best. I was playing around with different types of um, um, settings and, and, and so also with the headphones. So I think I got everything figured out. So a welcome all of you and welcome all of you who are joining us on YouTube. I record these live on Facebook, but of course up, I um, upload them onto YouTube for archival purposes so that all of you can watch the videos after the fact. So welcome all of you. Now today's Woodblock Wednesday is um, on a really important 20th century Japanese print artist who's actually considered a Japanese American actually. So. Um, it, so he worked in the United States as well as in Japan, um, and his name is Obata. Uh, and so uh, without further ado, let's just go to the table and, and have a look at what I brought today. So I'm going to step back so you could see the table. Um, I have quite a few things that laid out on the table, um, and I'll talk about everything in just a moment. Um, but the print we'll be discussing today is by uh, Chiyura Obata. And his dates are 1885 through 1975. He was born in Japan, and he immigrated into the United States in 1903. He has a very interesting story. Um, when he came to the United States, um, he was one of the, unfortunately, one of the Japanese Americans that were held in internment camps. Uh, but the young Obata was very much interested in art, uh, was an artist or display artistic abilities as a child, and produced a lot of art despite the, the circumstances in the internment camps. And so, you know, th there are works that are known um, that, you know, he produced while being um, held there. And of course, he went on to be a professor of art at uh, University of California, Berkeley. So, you know, th that's, that, those are things I should just point out. But the, the, the number one thing I think Obata is known for is his woodblock prints. And um, I've discussed Obata's work before previously in another Woodblock Wednesday, but I wanted to talk about this particular print because it's so striking um, and, and it's important. And, and so Obata is known to have produced a cohesive body of work featuring um, American landscapes, particularly the Yosemite Valley. And um, he, his most famous work really depicts that area. And he, he produced woodblock prints that were um, sort of, well, they, they were designs he created, but then published by a Japanese publisher, Takamizawa. And this is one of those prints that he designed and Takamizawa produced as a woodblock print. It's a fantastic, beautiful uh, American design. It, it's titled La Last, uh, <clears throat> Last Twilight on an Unknown Lake, Johnson Peak, High Sierra, California, USA. And um, that's the official title that Takamizawa gave the print. It was done in 1930. And you could just see how beautifully well done it is. It's a beautiful night scene. And it has a really soft, um, almost watercolor-like quality to it. But it is, in fact, all printed with woodblock prints with blocks. Um, and so, you know, I think it's a really neat design. It's beautiful. And it really showcases, um, you know, this period in time um, where Obata was featuring, uh, you know, scenes from the U.S. And, and what's interesting for this particular print, it was issued originally in this um, mat. It's a paper mat and it's stamped with the title of the print, Silence, Last Twilight on, on an Unknown Lake, Johnson Peak, uh, High Sierra, California, uh, USA, as I said. Artist name, Wood 
cut and color printed by Takamizawa. It's very rare to find such a, a, a cool sort of original component. component. Um, and so this is uh, original as how Takamizawa issued it. And so the print would have been in the mat. But along with the print, I have a really interesting folder that was also issued by Takamizawa. And here you are, the, the, there's, it's a woodblock printed label. It says World Landscape Series America by Chiura Obata. And of course here it says print and wood block, woodcut by Takamizawa. And so we have here is an original folder. And then of course there's another label. I'll come in close so you can see the label. And so the print in the mat would have been housed in this beautiful presentation folder. And so this is exactly what you would want to see if you have the print with all of its original materials. And this is such a desirable print. You see these come up for sale at auction. They achieve crazy prices. They're up in the $30,000 range. And so, um, which is basically the price um, uh, when, you're, when you're considering how rare this work is along with the, the mats and the, the folder, which is pretty neat. And so, you know, I, I, it's, a, it's a wonderful sort of um, co cohesive collection when you have all of these original materials. So I'm going to come in um, and sort of zoom in on the print so you could see it. You know, I want to point out and these colors are so rich and so well executed. You know, as I said, it, it really sort of has a striking uh, resemblance to a watercolor, but these these pigments are all sort of are all printed with a wood block. Such a strong, beautiful design. Now, I want to point out some important references for Obata. I always like to do that when we're discussing um, prints and paintings. There's this great book called o Obata's Yosemite. This was published oh, you know, 15 plus years ago. It's a really great reference on this series. There's a lot, there's a there's an excellent essay, but there's a lot of materials like watercolors, postcards, other things about the series that highlights Obata's sort of uh, trip to this region. I mean, he went there uh, physically, hiked, and, 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 and actually sketched out scenes of, of, of this landscape, so that, which helped him um, later create the woodblock prints. And there's this book here which came out fairly recently sort of an exhibition catalog for for exhibition of Obata's work that was um, traveling throughout the U.S. a couple years ago this is a lovely uh, um, painting on silk that's on the cover of this catalog and you know this this book highlights obviously Obata's work um, as a woodblock print artist but also as a painter and so this, this painting on the cover really highlights that. And this last book, um, Topaz Moon, this is the, the artwork that was produced by Obata and his contemporaries, his artists, um, the other artists that were with him in the internment camp uh, during World War II. The, this is a really interesting book, and I highly recommend actually all three of them, if you can find them. If you're, you're a fan of Obata, Certainly, these are three books that I would highly recommend. But moving back to the, the print, you can, you can really sort of look at this design and you kind of see the influence of, of Obata in terms of this, this early sort of um, landscape that belongs to the, the U.S. There were a lot of other artists um, that came after Obata who studied um, or, around uh, this time and under Obata there were Americans that were greatly influenced by Obata's 
um, prints and his interest in this region. And Obata is one artist of many who was really fascinated by the American landscape of this area. And of course, all of these artists produce fantastic, important work. And so a work that it really highlights and documents um, the American landscape of this time. So it's an important historical um, document as well as a beautiful work of art. So I'll come in and come again closely so you could see the, the print. Really wonderful design. Now the, the size for these prints, this is uh, generally speaking larger than Oban. It is, it's not double the size, but it is an oversized um, print. And so that actually also adds to sort of the grandeur of the design. It, it's sort of, if you're used to Shinhanga prints from the late 20s and 30s, you're used to seeing Oban-sized prints by Yoshida, by Koetsu, by Hasui. And this this design is larger than those, and so you it sort of sticks out. Um, and of course, uh, I should also mention that um, like Obata, Hiroshi Yoshida traveled to North America. Well, he, he traveled all around the world, but particularly, he traveled to North America and visited the Grand Canyon. So there's a, a wonderful Yoshida design of the Grand Canyon. And, but he also visited uh, the Yosemite Valley. And he produced the, the design El Capitan, um, which you know highlights uh, that beautiful um, uh, rock that, that's there in the Yosemite Valley. And so, um, yeah, so it is, it's one of those designs that Yoshida captured, and so did Obata. And so Obata, in many ways, traveled um, in, these, in, in, in this area, um, in the footsteps of Hiroshi Yoshida. Uh, Yoshida produced some of these designs uh, beforehand, and so Obata, this design being 1930, is a little after Yoshida's uh, designs, but nonetheless, they capture this landscape in its pristine condition. Um, you could almost kind of get a sense of the sort of wild wilderness of it. And, and, and this design in particular is done in a way that almost, it's almost animated. You know, the lines that were used um, by the artist to capture this landscape are very active. And um, yeah, and they have a really energetic quality which leads to the dynamic um, sort of overall feeling of the design. Yeah, I want to back so you could see the table and maybe the colors will pop a little bit differently so you could see the contrast because it is a, a nocturnal. Uh, so it's a design that's richer, darker than um, other Obata designs. Well, I want to thank all of you for joining me, and my apologies for, for the late broadcast. So if you're just joining me, I encourage you to watch uh, the, the video. I'm going to be posting it in momentarily, and um, also it will go up on YouTube along with my other Whitblock Wednesdays. So if you've missed a previous episode, I encourage you to have a look. Uh, they're all archived on my website, collectingjapaneseprints.com. And, um, you know, again, there's a, a lot of videos, some seminars on my, on my website, and, of course, Japanese prints. So if there's anything that I can um, assist you with, feel free to private message me. And, of course, if you have any questions about this print, uh, uh, feel free to add your question to the comments below, and I'd be happy to address them. Thank you very much, and I will see you next week on Woodblock Wednesday. Until then, bye-bye.